Early in the American War, the veteran Major Blomberg, the father of Dr. Blomberg, was expected to join his regiment, which was at the time on service in the island of Dominica. His period of absence had expired, and his brother officers, eagerly anticipating his return, as vessel after vessel arrived from England without conveying the looked-for passenger, declared to one another, well, at all events, he must come in the next. His presence in the island now became indispensable, and the governor, impatient of so long an absence, was on the point of writing a remonstrance on the subject to the authorities in England, when, as he was sitting at night in his parlour, dressed in his gown and slippers, and reflecting on the conduct of the absentee, with no very favourable or lenient thoughts, a step was heard to ascend the stairs, and walk along the passage without. Who can it be, thought the governor, intruding at so late an hour? It is certainly Bloomberg's step. At this moment the door opened, and Major Bloomberg stood before him. The Major advanced towards the grate and flung himself into a chair opposite the Governor. There was something hurried in his manner, a forgetfulness of all the ordinary forms of greeting, and abruptly saying, I must converse with you a moment, my friend, he rose and faced the affrighted Governor. There was an air of conscious superiority about the manner of the visitor that admitted no dispute. On your return to England, he continued, you will go to a farmhouse near the village of Sherborne in Dorsetshire. You will there find two children. They are mine, the offspring and the orphans of my secret marriage. You must be the guardian to those parentless infants. To prove their legitimacy and the consequent right to my property, you must demand of the woman with whom they are placed at nurse the red Morocco case which was committed to her charge. Open it. It contains all the necessary papers. Adieu. You will see me no more. Major Bloomberg instantly withdrew. The Governor of Dominica, surprised at the commission, at the abrupt entrance and the equally abrupt departure, rang the bell to desire some of his household to follow the Major and request his return. None had seen him enter. None had witnessed his exit. It was strange. It was passing strange. There soon after arrived intelligence that Major Blomberg had arrived on board a vessel for Dominica, which had been dismasted in a storm at sea, and was supposed to have subsequently sunk, as she was never more heard of, about the time in which the figure had appeared to the governor. All that Major Blomberg had communicated was carefully stamped in the memory of his friend. On his return to England, which occurred in a few months after the apparition above described had been seen by the governor, he immediately hastened to the village in Dorsetshire, and to the house in which the children were resident. He found them. He asked for the casket. It was immediately surrendered. The legitimacy and the claims of the orphans of Blomberg were established, and they were admitted to the enjoyment of their rights without any controversy or dispute. This tale was related to Queen Charlotte, and so deeply interested her that she immediately adopted the son as the object of her peculiar care and favour. He was brought to Windsor, and educated with His Majesty George IV, of whom he was, through life, the favourite, the companion, and the friend.